Hello and welcome to the final section in our series on um, using reinforcement learning in robotics. So um, all the preceding videos dealt with the theory um, that you needed to be able to understand what is going on in this code. And so if um, you are watching this video, even though you've not seen the previous videos, I mean, it's still going to be okay if you already have an idea of um, reinforcement learning and you know how the multi-armed bandit algorithm works. Even so, I think it will still be useful to watch those videos that explains um, the multi-armed bandit algorithms in the context of robotics so that you get an understanding of what we are trying to achieve here. So this is basically the code I'm going to take you through. But before then, I'm going to do a quick overview of how to set up ev3 dev on your legos mindstorm so you basically go to ev3dev.org you go to the getting started and then you download the ev3 dev stretch image by clicking this button here if you download it you're going to get a zip file that contains um, an os image which you can burn onto an sd card and to do the burning what you have to do is you come to um, balena.io and you download etcher so etcher is a software that you can use to burn images onto sd card so let's say if you want to install raspberry pi or you want to install ubuntu on um on an sd card you basically download etcher and it's just a three-step process so when you download the software and you open it you're going to see this window that looks like this you basically select the image that you downloaded in this case it's going to be the ev3 dev image that you downloaded from here and then you select the um, SD card onto which you want to flash, and then you can click flash to begin to um, flash the image onto the SD card. Once that is done, you just take your SD card, you slot it into the SD card slot on your EV3 brick, and you reboot it. So what is going to happen is it's not going to replace the original OS that comes with your Lego Mindstorm, but the EV3 is going to boot from the SD card, and so what will be available on your EV3 is going to be um, the EV3 dev image. And what EV3 dev image basically does is um, it makes it possible for you to use different programming languages to access um, the sensors on your EV3 robot. So you can click here to see all the supported programming languages, and in this course, I use the Python. Um, version the Python programming language so I'm targeting the sensors and um, the actuators using Python but you are free to use Java Go C++ C Prolog and um, a myriad of programming languages there so I'm not actually going to go into details on how to set it up because th these two sites are very detailed and um, you can learn everything you need to learn from there so at this point I'm assuming you have burned um, the EV3 image onto an SD card and um, you you have slotted it into your EV3, you've booted it up, and so you will be able to program your EV3 using Python. Now, one more thing that is um, going to be useful is that there is an extension. So if you come to VS Code and um, you search for EV3, so basically there is an extension, okay? Um, the Lego Mindstorm EV3 Micro Python extension. I have already installed it, so um, I'm not going to install it again. But if you haven't, then you definitely want to install this Lego Mindstorm uh, Micro Python extension. What it helps you to do is that it basically allows you to connect your EV3 brick to your computer, and then you can upload code onto it through. Um, a USB cable so you basically connect a USB cable to your PC and then you connect it to your EV3 brick so as I'm talking I'm actually booting up my my robot so I can connect it and then demonstrate things to you but what happens here is it once you install this extension it gives you the opportunity to create projects it's, it's basic Python right so you create a project and then it can establish a connection between your computer and the EV3 brick so that you can send your code Onto it, I'm going to show you in um, a Jiffy, but I want to explain this code first. So, um, the first thing you need to do is this shebang thing that is going to let the EV3 brick know which Python is going to use to run your application. 
and these are basic imports that I needed to import. This is time random because if you watch the videos on the theory, you know there is some random number generation as far as the epsilon greedy algorithm is concerned. Okay, so I import time um, random and then these two imports are helping me to import the classes that I need to be able to assess um, the actuators and the sensors on my robot. So I'm um, importing large motor output A, output D, move tank, and then speed percent. So large motor is basically the main class that you, you use to um, control the motors on your robot. The output A and D, because I have connected the two motors to output A and D. So if you don't do exactly as I have done, then remember to change the output because it has um, um, four, is actually output A, B, C, and then D. So you have to um, check which side of your of your moto um, I mean which port your motors are connected to and then you update the code appropriately okay now um, that the move tank is what helps me to control two motors simultaneously and then the speed percent helps you to specify the speed at which you want your motor to move and I also have um, an import for the infrared sensor and then the touch sensor what happened is I actually didn't use the touch sensor in this project, so you can ignore that. But the infrared sensor class also allows you to use the infrared sensor to sense distance. Okay, so on line eight, what I'm doing is I'm instantiating a move tank object, and what the move tank object takes is the two ports that you have connected your motors to. So I've connected to port A and then port D, and I'm also going to initialize my infrared sensor. So the infrared sensor can actually work in three modes. In this particular um, robot, I want to use it as an infrared proximity sensor. I want to sense how far, aw um, far away um, um, I am from an obstacle. So I set the mode to IR prox. So this is just initializing the infrared sensor. And the beautiful thing about EV3 Dev Python is that for sensors, you don't need to specify which port you have connected it to. So the framework knows how to identify which sensor is connected to which port which is um, quite nice and um, over here on line 13 what i did is um, i'm instantiating an object for my touch sensor even though like i said i didn't use it so the most important aspect of this code you need to focus on is line 15 all the way to the end so you remember that we, we were trying to optimize actions under uncertainties okay so I defined three actions. The first one is a step forward. And what happens in the step forward is that I want the, the robot to take a step forward for only 0 0.25 um, um, microseconds. So, I mean, the time here is in seconds. So if I do 0 0.25, that is um, um, 0 0.25 of a second, okay? And the reason you don't want it to move continuously is otherwise you cannot actually let the robot act based on what it is learning so you make it take a step just like babies learn how to walk it is step by step human beings walk step by step we don't walk continuously as though we are standing on wheels that are rotating continuously so to move the tank all i have to do is um so my step forward my step backward functions take a tank object which i have created one here as a tank drive and then I start with a default speed of 20. It um, ranges between, I think, um, negative 100 and 100 or so. And then the time. So I have default values for all these ones. And what I do is I, I say the tank dot on for seconds. So what this happens is it moves the tank for the number of seconds that you have specified at the speed. Okay. Now you realize that I am moving forward. In step forward, I negate the speed. The reason I have to do this is um, I tend my brake. So the orientation of the brake is such that um, the forward is where the sensors are. But in my case, I, I move the motor's connections to fa the, facing, um, the front facing side of the robot. So to make it move forward, I need to negate my speed. And to make it move backward, I need to make the speed positive. So step forward, step backward are basically similar functions, except that one negates the speed and um, the other one, the speed is positive. Now, this do nothing is also an action that we can let a robot take. And what 
um, happens during do nothing is the robot basically stands still for two seconds it is also a valid action that we can let the robot take and the reason why I came up with these three actions is because these are the actions I need to be able to let the robot learn the optimal behaviors that I want it to learn so you are free to come up with as many actions as are needed to train your robot if your robot is uh, if, if the 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 task you want your robot to perform involves turning left, turning right, or turning to a certain angle and all that, feel free to define actions for all these, okay? Now, the next function is get distance. What get distance basically does is it takes a sensor and then it reads the value from that sensor. And um, the, the, the sensor I'm going to pass to get distance when I call is the infrared sensor. So basically, get sensor simply calls infrared sensor dot value, which gives um, the, the distance that the the robot is from the nearest obstacle and it ranges from zero to 100 centimeters which is quite short so when you are testing keep that range in mind okay so the most important code here is the reward function and i told you the reward function is what gives the robot a feedback signal to know whether the action it is taking is profitable is positive is pleasurable or it is negative or it is a punishment so the way I calculate my reward if you watch the video where I explained how you come up with a reward function is I take a previous distance that is the previous um, sensor measurement of where the robot was as far as the obstacle is concerned and then I take its current state so what happens is before the robot takes any action I will measure its distance from the obstacle after taking the action I will measure its distance once more and then based on what I want to optimize, I will say um, I, will, I will reward or punish the robot depending on whether it moved closer or it moved far away. So in this um, particular example, you can see that I said if current distance is less than previous distance, then I am giving it a reward of negative five. What is happening here is that if what, what I'm saying is if I see that the the robot is much closer to the obstacle than it was before then i am punishing it with a negative reward of minus minus five and then the next line if so i check if the current distance is greater than the previous distance i am also punishing it with a negative reward of minus five however if the current distance doesn't change from the previous distance then i reward it with plus one so what is what this reward function is going to do is it is going to let the robot know that i want it to stand still because when it moves forward i punish it with a much bigger value when it moves backward i punish it with a much bigger value and when it stands still i reward it with plus one so the robot over time will learn to figure out that okay moving forward gives me a punishment of minus five Moving backwards also gives me a punishment of minus five. However, standing still gives me a plus one reward. So the best action for me to take is to stand still. And I have videos uh, to demo how the robot behaves in all these different settings, okay? So feel free to play with the reward function. For example, I can punish it more for moving forward than moving backward, which will also communicate to the robot that um, maybe I want you to stand still, but it, it is acceptable for you to move forward, but it is a no-no for me for you to move backward. So feel free to play with different values that is going to um, help the robot know what to do. For example, if I wanted the robot to um, move forward, then what I'm going to do is I can reward it plus one for moving forward and then negative five and these negative numbers i'm choosing arbitrarily just should just be be in such a way that it communicates is able to reinforce or give a feedback to the robot to know exactly what you want it to do so now that i am giving it negative punishment for everything except when it moves closer then it learns to know that okay what i want it to do is to move closer to the obstacle okay another thing that i can do is i can reward it plus one for moving back and the negative five for everything else so in this definition of the reward function the robot is going to learn that the best action i want it to take is to always move further away from the obstacle that has been placed um, in front of it so feel free to play with the 
the word function any way you want and let the robot learn what you want it to accomplish okay and um, so this is where I do the calculation of the action values and um, in the theory video I explained to you that the action values is basically um, a division of the total rewards you um, the robot have accumulated for taking a particular action by the number of times it has taken that action and um, this this if statement here is to guard against um, divide by zero exception because when I am starting out the rewards for each action is going to be zero and the number of times each action has been taken is also going to be zero so I just want to guard against um, division by zero that is why I check if um, the number of times that action has been taken is zero then I just return zero otherwise I do a division which is that particular reward divided by the number of um, times the action has been taken and then I return the action values as um, a list of numbers so this is where we start to do the reinforcement learning okay so I initialize my rewards I start off by saying um, reward for action 0 is 0 action 1 is 1 action 2 is I'm um, sorry action 1 is 0 action 2 is 0 so it is starting out having no rewards for any of the actions because of course it has taken none of the actions okay and so I come here and I say action count is also equal to zero 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 because it has not taken any of the actions now this is the epsilon this is the number of times I want the robot to explore instead of exploiting and I explained to you that exploration is what the robot does to figure out um, um, new things about its environment instead of doing the best action because sometimes the the optimal action might be dynamic even though in our case we didn't make it dynamic but it is still important that you allow your robot to explore and then learn new things about the environment and then over here before I start I said previous distance is equal to get distance from the infrared sensor so basically the robot starts off by measuring its distance from the obstacle and in the demo videos when I show you you see that I place an obstacle in front of the robot and that is where it starts off its um, behavior okay so this while true is going to loop forever and then I say action is equal to none because the whole point is for the robot to figure out which action you want it to take this is where I generate a random number and then I check if the random number is less than epsilon this is just the Python implementation of the epsilon greedy pseudocode that I showed you in um, some videos uh, um, not too far from this one so if it is less than epsilon then it means you want the robot to explore instead of exploiting and so I generate a random integer between 0 and 2 so this random dot run int can return anything between 0 1 and 2 and that is because my actions are 0 1 and 2 so whatever integer it returns here I take it as the action I want the robot to take otherwise I want to exploit and to do the exploitation I explained to you that you need to calculate the ag max so what you first do is you calculate the action values that is where you divide um, the rewards by action count and then it's going to give you a list of three numbers because the rewards are three action counts are three and then you get the maximum value out of the actions action values and then now I get the index of the maximum action value which gives me the action that I want the robot to take okay now at this point we know which action to take action is always going to be a number between 0 and 2 so 0 1 2 because I have three actions that I want the robot to perform move forward do nothing or step backward okay now we know what action we want to take so we come in here and then we actually call the the, the action that we want the robot to perform based on the action value the action integer that we have so if action is equal to zero then we want the robot to do nothing and then if you come up here you see that in do nothing the robot will simply stand still for two seconds so in the demo you see that there, there could be long periods of time when the robot is standing still what it basically means is that at that point the robot thinks the best action to take is to stand still else if action is equal to one then I want you to step backwards so the step backwards function is just going to move the motors backwards for um, 0.25 seconds and then I say if it is 2 then I want it to move forward so what happens is the robot is going to take a step forward now when you finish 
I get the current distance, which is equal to um, get distance from infrared sensor, and then I reward the robot. Okay, so to reward the robot, I call the calculate reward function. I pass in the previous distance and the current distance. This is where we know we have to reward because if you don't reward the robot, it doesn't know how to reinforce its actions, and so it will, it will keep taking random random um, actions or behaving randomly in the environment. So you need to keep updating the rewards um, time and time again. So I get the reward and then for that particular action, I add the reward to, into the rewards list. So rewards is a list. Each index represents the reward for a particular action. So I look at the action that was taken and I increment the reward at that index. Then I increment the action um, action count for that particular action because the robot has already taken action. The action is whatever we stored in action here. So the robot has taken that um, action and you have to set the previous distance to be equal to the current distance because on the next um, iteration of the loop, you want the previous distance to be the current distance where the robot is starting from. And down here, what I'm doing is that um, I'm basically just... Um, giving the robot a breathing space. I want it to have some space to breathe and um, to continue the loop. So I'm just sleeping for 0 0.5 seconds. You, you can leave it out if you want your robot's action to be faster. Otherwise, um, you, can, you can increase it. I mean, change it as you see fit. So this is how you implement the MAB for the robot. And um, in the next video, I'm going to show you a demo demos of um, um, the robots optimizing for all the three actions that um, we have spoken about so i actually have the videos here and i'm going to play them for you to see so thank you very much for watching and um, i will see you in the next video